Concurrency. Yes. Right. So, so um, as we what's in, your, what's in your talk? Since we had a kind of chat beforehand, um, even though, you know, the fancy title contains completable future, because, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously nobody reads abs abstracts these days, so it's all about the title. So <laughs> I was trying to, basically the main point here is to first get more people in the room, right? But ultimately the main focus of the doc, and I established it right up front, is to the break this misconception of complexity of concurrency in Java, because uh, I basically share my experience uh, working with many architects who've, uh, who have a very kind of a hardcore fear of concurrency because the only thing they've ever used with Java was threads and runnables. And they remember how complex it is to manage that, and that's totally true, it is complex. But, you know, going for even Java 5 and now with a completable future when it comes to asynchrony, the development and management of multi-threading became so much more, so much simpler comparing to the past threads and runnables. And that's my idea that we need to go away from this fear of concurrency towards admiration of how actually powerful and nice it is. So that's basically the gist of it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so concretely, like, what do you, um, what do you see as the uh, advantages then for, for concurrency in Java? So, so obviously, with the even with uh, this hot wo new word, the microservices, mm -hmm. the idea that you shouldn't be having the blocking threads uh, on a single thread that you're working on. It becomes an outdated uh, idea. And also our f laptops, they're so powerful. Like my, even my phone is more powerful than the laptop would be years ago. So you can't really just expect that one thread is good enough. But at the same time, it's complex enough that you don't just, if you work with project managers who say, just add another thread to your app and make it twice as fast. You still have to appreciate how complex it is while making it you know, doable enough that you can actually get started in Java with multi-threading uh, in a fairly easy manner. Because it's more declarative these days, like it's everything in Java. They're moving towards declarative models, so they abstract complexities away from you. Like, for example, streams were for the some iterations or parallel streams for parallel processing. Uh, so that's basically the core idea of this talk, to show that new power while still admitting that it's complex enough that um, it, ma it, me it makes sense to stand on the you know, shoulders of giants who actually work on those uh, Java libraries. So there was um, uh, the release of streams with uh, Java 8. So what happened uh, since? So obviously, if you, I mean, if you look, I, foc I try to focus on completable future more than okay. on the parallel streams. Um, I believe Do Dr. Venkat did a good presentation mm -hmm. on parallel streams. So I didn't want to repeat that, obviously. And I couldn't, if even if I wanted to. But um, so instead, I focused on uh, one of the flavors of multi-threading, which was asynchronous programming. Because mm -hmm. with JavaScript being all over, obviously the asynchrony is on everyone's lips. So I wanted to show that asynchrony obviously is a feature that you can uh, definitely be empowered with if you use Java. So that's why, while after I go through this idea of going from fear towards admiration for multi-threading, then I focus on asynchrony using completable futures. Okay. And um, I basically show that now we have a full control over threads, whether before before Java 8, when we had to use the concurrency API, it was challenging to control futures because you would have to get, get them started. Th it's a process, a synchronous process that runs elsewhere. But if you want to get the results before the results, are the, the processing is done, you basically have to block the thread, which again, going back to this initial problem of managing threads being complex and just defeating the purpose. With completable future, it's so much easier. It's uh, very developer-friendly. It becomes much easier to write code. And that's if you look even further from Java 8 towards Java 9, you can see that completable futures became uh, even simpler. Like before, you would have to supply uh, additional thread pool if you wanted to. Uh, but now in Java 9, they really simplify that and even skip that step altogether. So you can see that they're improving now the ex developer experience even further around asynchronous development. So. Okay. So is it um, a feature that is uh, commonly used in programs today, or are people actually not really thinking, or does it require like extra um, um, thinking to uh, to apply a, com a completable future? Or what's your That's take a on good question. Um, one of the major things I like about completable future is how similar it is to and how close they make it for you to write comparing to like a single-threaded development. Even like um, they even handle exceptions in the same way you would have a try-catch finally 
in the re regular, s you know, single thread development. In the completable features, they also do it in a similar way with their special keywords as well, but it's also in the streamlined for you, so it's easier to write. So in terms of like a learning curve, it's fairly flat. It's not that complex. And also, I really see it's being used more and more uh, with the things like Thrift API, where they're trying to do multi-tier development um, in the different organizations. In the organization where I work, we also use it for that purpose. Um, also, I see completable features commonly used for logging or some monitoring uh, post-processors where they don't block the main thread, but you want to, for example, if uh, I'm trying to withdraw some money from the ATM, right, and I have the main process I care about, the process of withdrawing the money, but before I request the withdrawal process, I want to start an asynchronous thread that is logging on Splunk, for example, this, the, the fact that someone requested withdrawal of a certain sum. Uh, and I don't want that asynchronous process obviously blocking my process of withdrawing the money because if as a customer of ITM, imagine I'm trying to get my $100 or something uh, in Prague and I get the exception, Splunk instance is not available, we can't give you the money. That would be just a basic messed up experience, right? And so it's very commonly used now with asynchronous threads for the more monitoring pr purposes, of course. Yeah. Cool. Um, so any... Um, any other like resources that you found really useful, like in terms of like understanding uh, completable futures? Yeah, uh, there are quite a few nice tutorials online. Completable futures been uh, obviously talked about a lot in the past couple of years. There was a great talk in uh, Devox Morocco uh, a couple of years ago, from what I remember. Um, I actually studied that for one of uh, these talk as well in the past. Uh, there was a I don't remember exactly the, the, the person who is a major, uh, by, not Baidu, but uh, yeah. it's obviously Baidu search engine. But anyways, there are quite a few tutorials online around completable future, much more on uh, hands-on. Uh, again, this talk is more about, I'm not attempting to show all the capabilities or how to do it per se, but I show that how similar the development or synchronous coding is to like if you were to just write a single thread, right? So people don't get scared, uh, but they still see the power and the importance of uh, this new Java functionality. Cool. Uh, do you blog? I forgot to. Uh yes, I yes? do. Okay. I um, that's something I've been neglecting for the longest time. I've been trying to like hone my developer uh, public speaking skills. Yeah. But I've realized that you know you can engage a lot more people by writing blogs. So I on my on my website, uh, on my blog, personal blog, I'm trying to write some uh, articles. Lately, mostly about my travel, because I travel a lot, but uh, I've been um, trying to write some more about development too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. stopping by and talking to us about computable yeah. features. Thank, thank you so much. You.